Okay, welcome back to EPA 1 for our 11th week of the coronavirus semester. This is our first class for the 11th week. It's a recorded lecture, as we do most weeks. And today we're mostly going to work through the book, although I want to review the test a little bit because it seems there was some confusion about grading. Once again, let me remind you, double check your scores. Make sure there is no math error. I found one test where I missed one page. So make sure that the PDF file that I sent back to you through the what is it uh, uh, messaging system in CTL, there was a PDF attached. Make sure that it is the correct test, that I have marked all the points, and that I have added all the points together correctly. You don't want me to miscount your points. Similarly, in that message is a series of numbers. Those are from the interview. Count up the zeros and ones and twos. Make sure the first number there is correct. Make sure the second number matches the PDF, which is correct so that we get the right score. Then we have to convert those scores. Now remember your midterm is 20 points total. That's 10 points for the listening test, the paper you gave me, and 10 points for the one-to-one -one interview. As I showed you last time, you got a raw score, just counting the points. And that raw score is what I show on the message that I sent you through the CTL. Then you must convert the raw score into your points. How do you do that? Well, there is an interview and there is a listening. And the points get converted for the 16 points for the interview. 16 points gets converted to A, B, C, C minus D, 10 point, 9 point, 8 point, 7 point, 7 point. There's no F's in my class. And for the listening test, there was a total of 13 points possible, but somehow or another I didn't manage to delete this. This is wrong. It shouldn't be there. So if you got 13 or 12 in that paper tw test, you got a 10, if you got 11 or 10, you got a 9, if you got 8, 9 or 8, you got 8 points, if you got 7 on your midterm test, you got 7 points, if you got 6 or less, you got 7 points, there is no F on my test. So you take these numbers, 10, 9, 8, or 7, 10, 9, 8, or 7, and you add them together. The point is no score will be less than 16. I do not give F's on my test. So, your lowest score is 16. Your highest possible score is 20. Your midterm test does not kill you for my class grade. It tells you what you need to do. And that's all there is for that. That's the end of that game. So we're going to close that. Oh uh, yeah, we'll save it. 
And we can make my face bigger because I know you love to see me. Right? Sure. And then we jump into the book. At the end of the last Zoom class, we finished page 28, which was the Made in Mexico. And that was a little bit of a listening exercise to make sure you understand numbers and to complete sentences. And it was a little bit of a reminder about telling a com company history. Remember that in your final test, it's only one-to-one -one interview. Any question I asked you on the paper test or on the interview test can be on the final test. The final test is all semester. So it gives you more chance to think about improve your company history. We talked about things like Daegu and organizations, right? That's all from last week. So what we have now is page 30. We're going to skip page 29. We will do page 29 in our live chat class. So we're on page 30, which is about company his company mergers. Merger. Merger means a joining. Okay? You've probably heard about the word mergers and acquisitions, and I'm going to write that for you. I'm going to slide that. Well, what the heck? It's not going to show that way. I have to slide it over. Here, make this smaller because it doesn't want to fit. It's amazing that here we are so many weeks into the semester and I'm still figuring things out. All right. Merger. M-E-R-G-E-R. A-C-Q-U-I-S-I-T-I-O-N. Acquisition. Together, they're sometimes called M and A. Or M and A's. Merger and acquisition. Acquisition means to acquire. To acquire means to take ownership or possession of. To take it. It's now mine. Probably ownership, but it could possibly be not actually as an owner. But anyway, I take it and I treat it as mine. Merger means joining probably maybe sorta usually equals Q U A L S equals or something close to equals and in both cases with a merger or an acquisition at the end there's only one maybe started as two or three or four or five or six but it finally ends up as only one let's move my finger this way only one However, it can happen when there is a merger or acquisition that even though there's only one final owning company, that the old names continue as separate divisions or branches. For example, Hyundai took over Kia. We still have Kia cars. The Kia sales system is completely separate from the Hyundai sales system. We have a Kia store and a Hyundai store. And the after service, the service center, are separate still. But at the top, top, top level, Hyundai Motors owns both Hyundai Motors and Kia Motors. Um, one of the advantages of the merger and acquisition process can be, not must be, but can be, that they are able to join certain parts, certain sections, to reduce waste. For example, if you start taking apart these Hyundai cars and Kia cars, you may find that many of the parts work on both sides. That the Kia part works perfectly well on the Hyundai car. And the Hyundai part works perfectly on the Kia car because they were designed by a design center 
that is shared and that maybe the, the body looks a little different or just some designs on the body look a little different but when you take off the outside body of the car you find that many of the inside parts are exactly the same you take one off of one put it on the other it fits no problem so that they have joined certain parts in the same way a few years ago many of the universities in Korea went through mergers uh Day and what is it Sangju Sanap Day have merged and now it is Kyungbuk Day Sangju campus in the same way Busan Day took over Miryang Sanap Day my wife's old school and so now my wife is a, a Miryang campus worker but she is officially a let's get this right she's officially a Busan University employee so she works for Busan Day Miryang campus and from time to time a couple of years ago she got transferred to the Busan campus for a year or two I've forgotten and now she's back in Miryang Okay, but, but the higher level bosses, the top administration is all in Busan. So Busan Day has three campuses because they opened their own second campus and then they merged with Miryang Sanap Day to become Busan University Miryang campus. So this is an idea of a merger. Sometimes it's not easy to tell what's a merger and, and what's an acquisition. Theoretically, the merger means the two or more groups join as equals and you might remember that a few weeks ago when we were talking about HP Hewlett Packard and Compaq there was the story about Compaq was it this class? maybe it was another class Ooh, sorry maybe it was another class um, anyway companies can can join together but sometimes they join as equals sometimes not so let's take a look at this article that talks about company mergers read the article page 30 in the late 1990s many large companies joined to form new mega companies mega means super super large big 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 American financial services companies Citicorp and travelers which was an insurance company, merged and became Citigroup. And maybe you have seen in Korea somewhere Citibank. Well, Citibank was part of Citicorp. Swiss drug companies Sandoz and Sivajigi joined to, be, to form Novartis. And automobile manu makers Daimler-Benz of Germany and Chrysler of the USA merged to form Daimler Chrysler. By the way, if you think you've heard of Daimler Benz, well, yeah. Daimler Benz makes Mercedes Benz. And Daimler Benz is itself a merger because once upon a time there were Daimler cars and there were Mercedes Benz cars, and those two companies merged. Just like Hyundai and Kia. In many cases, mergers are successful. But there are also many difficulties. In the Daimler Chrysler merger, executives face two major management culture differences. Culture differences, management culture differences. First, Chrysler managers receive higher salaries than Daimler Benz managers. So, an American manager working in Germany might have a much larger salary than his German boss. Second, Chrysler engineers, designers, and marketing people work together to build and market cars. But at Daimler-Benz, engineers are in charge. Designers and marketing people don't work together as much. Maybe that means that the, the Mercedes car is more of an engineer's car and actually is technically better. And maybe that means that Chrysler cars are more stylish, more fashionable, and easier to sell to people who like new styles. Maybe. 
Balancing differences is not easy. And many people are watching how Daimler Chrysler solves its management culture differences. Okay, let's complete the chart. First, in financial services industry, financial services, right? Anything that's connected with helping people with finance, with money. Company names were? Finance, finance, finance. Citicorp and Travelers. And they merged to form the new company, Citigroup. Next, the next industry that we talked about was you could say Swiss drug companies or you could say drug companies or you could even say the more technically correct word is P-H-A-R-M-A-C-E-U-T-I-C-A-L-S pharmaceuticals. When you go to the Yakuk in U.S., we generally call that a pharmacy because it has a pharmacist, somebody who can make uh, medicines for you. It can actually mix medicines for you or just give you what's already made. But that's the same thing as a drugstore. And pharmaceuticals mean medical or medicinal medicinal drugs. Medical or medicinal drugs drugs. Alright, so Swiss drug industry or drug industry or pharmaceuticals industry, the company names were Sandoz and uh, Siva Jigi. I'm trying to push you to work faster. And the new company name, same sentence, right? Novartis. Again, you don't have to write this down. I'm not going to test you on this information. We're going to talk about the idea behind it. The third industry here was automobiles. Automobile manufacturing, automobile makers. The company names were Daimler-Benz and Chrysler. Formed to merge Daimler-Chrysler. Now, when we talk about these company names, they're actually, they are actually already have subdivisions. So, for example, Chrysler, which has now separated from Daimler-Benz, that company separated, and then Chrysler merged with Fiat out of Italy. So we had a merger that failed and separated, and then a new merger. Chrysler is maybe perhaps best known in Korea for Jeep. And Jeep is a company that Chrysler bought. They acquired. It was not a merger. Jeep was a division of a different company that went bankrupt and Jeep uh, went and Chrysler bought the Jeep part. And in the same way we know that in Korea, Sangyong has gone bankrupt. Well, they went bankrupt and got bought by a Chinese company and then the Chinese company let it fail and now an Indian company, Mahindra, has bought Sangyong. And maybe that one's going to fail. But those were acquisitions where another company went in and bought it and said, you are now part of us. There was no partnership. There was no merger. They just bought it. All right? So, uh, sometimes mergers don't work. Why not? Well, part B, check the two problems in the Daimler Chrysler merger. Working hour, salary differences, departments working together, vacation time. What do we got? Working hours? No, we didn't talk about no working hours. Salary differences? Yes, an American going to Germany could make more money than his boss. Departments working together? Well, yeah. The idea that in America, uh, three, comp three departments work together equally, but in Germany, the engineers take charge, and the other companies, the other divisions, marketing and um, design, are subordinate. They're under 
they have less power. And vacation time, no. So I've mentioned a few mergers that we know of. I wonder what other mergers you know of. In Korea? Globally? So the idea of mergers and acquisitions, the note that I have here on this slide, this could be on a test. The idea that there are difficulties in mergers and acquisitions could be on a test. I could ask you about companies you know about that have merged or been acquired, been bought. I don't care what companies you talk about. But then I'll say, so uh, how did that work? What are some strong points? What are some weak points? I'm very familiar with some of the problems with the Busan Day uh, merger. I know about those problems. I hear about them every day. Yeah, I do. For sure. I hear about those problems. Um, I Once upon a time, I worked at Median Bay for two years. And I know many of the professors who are there still. Some have retired, some are still there. And uh, I know uh, what they think about that particular merger. Uh... If you go back in time a few years, before I came to Gimenpe, but I heard the stories about the combination of Dongsan Hospital and Gemyeong University, and the doctors who were at Dongsan Hospital back then did not feel it was a merger. They thought it was an acquisition. They weren't so pleased. But that's long in the past, and it's not really much that I can say. So, we've got a reading about company mergers. If you take a look at my page, uh, you will see right here, there's an HW on my page. Don't worry about the homework marker. Some years I use this assignment for homework. Still... Consider it to be the same as the star that I use for test. And I'm going to pick up a pen right now and put a star on that page. So now, at the top, you can see a star. Right? And so you know a star means ideas, the teaching information on this page can be on the test, but not the details of Daimler Chrysler or Novartis or whomever. Okay, so we're now on page 31. You should grab a piece of paper or something because we have listening at the bottom of the page. Like every chapter, there is some number stuff. I'm going to play the recordings and you're going to write down the information. So for item number four on page 31, there is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And for number five, there is A, B, C, D, E. All right? So again, it's listening practice. These numbers are not on the test, but it's good for you to challenge you by listening and trying to get the right answer. Page 31. Numbers. Exercise 4. Listen. On a piece of paper, write the years you hear in numbers. A. 1953 B 1995 C 2003 
D. 1986. E. 2050. F. 1978. G. 2012. H. 1992. I. 2000. J. 2066. Okay. So we've got some numbers, maybe. Are you ready? A. 1953. Oh, let's play the let's play the recording again. You can hear their voice rather than mine. A. 1953. B. 1995. C. 2003 D. 1978 F. 1978 G. 2012 H. 1992 I. 2000 J. 2066. Okay. So you might remember, maybe, that I told you a long time ago that around the turn of the century, the turn of the century from 1999 to 2000 to 2001, we weren't really sure how we were going to say numbers for the new century. Around 1980, a movie was made, and the name of the movie was 2002. A uh, Space Odyssey. O D Y S S E Y. That was the name of the movie. 2002 A Space Odyssey. And that was a guess as to how we would say it. Now, this book was made around the year 1999 2000. And so when they said these numbers, they were kind of guessing how somebody would say it. 2003, excuse me, 2003, then she said 2050, later she said, do you remember, how'd she say this, 1986, well, E, 2050, all right, five, Let's look at C again. C, 2003. Right? F, 1978. G, 2012. G was 2012. Now, this was only eight years ago. Do you remember how we said it? We would say March 1st, 2012. We didn't say 2012. 
Nowadays, if I'm looking backwards, I might say, oh, what were you doing back in 2012? Might. But more probably, I would say, what were you doing back in 2012? Okay, so the guess, how we might say things, didn't guess quite right. 1992. I, 2000. Okay, but here again we said just 2000. So 2000, then we had 2012, 2050, 2003. What's happening here? The last one? J, 2066. So we're back to that 20 thing, right? W-E-N-T-Y. Will we change styles again in a few years? Well, maybe. I say maybe because if we look back one century before, At the year 1903, we said 1903, because ought was a way to say no, not, or da, zero. We said 1903. Nowadays, we would say 1903, but back then, they said 1903. Right? But they never said uh, 1903 the year 1903 so we don't usually say 1966 yet in the 21st century this 2000 something well we had what was the Olympics 2002 right we didn't say the 2002 Olympics we said the 2002 Olympics but now we're talking about the 2020 Olympics, which are being canceled or delayed one year. Right, 2020. We didn't say the 2020 Olympics, we said the 2020 Olympics. So, it's really hard to predict how we're going to say these numbers. Basically, you say it one way, and if somebody is confused, then you try to say it a different way. That's the best advice I can give you. Say it one way, and if people are confused, then say it a different way. So now we're going to go to 5A and just go down, delete everything, and play the next recording. Now, we're talking about dates. I don't want you to write the way they have in the book. You can see example at the bottom of the page, 2.13.98. I don't want you to write this way because it's very confusing. It's not a global standard. That is an American standard. Most children in America learn to write their date this way. We would read that as February 13, 1998. We write the month first, then, then the date, then the year. February 13, 1998. But in England, they do it different. Okay? So let's take a look at that. USA 2 slash 1 3 slash 9 8. Well, at least you can know because there's a 13, it cannot be a month. But in UK, they write it thirteen two ninety eight, the 13th day of the second month of 1998. And actually, that kind of makes sense because we're going from smaller to bigger, right? Smaller date. Bigger month, bigger year. Ah, Professor, I got it. Slash is American, dash is Korean. Well, no. Because sometimes Americans use a dash.
and occasionally, maybe rarely, the British use a slash. And sometimes you'll see let's look here, numbers written always two place. So it could be 13 02 98. Whoops. Dash. But there'll always be a zero if there's no one. But they don't like a no number. Okay. Up one more row. Korea and many other Asian countries will write 98. One, two. One, three. It's difficult. I don't have an easy answer for you. I'm sorry. I wish I did. I don't. Okay. So, now we are listening to the dates under number 5 on page 31. Do not write with a slash, as the Americans do. Or if you want to, you can. But I want you to write something that's very clear for you. And one way to do that is to write with letters. J-A or J-A-N for January. F-E-B is usually February. M-A-R is usually March. A-P-R, April. M-A-Y, J-U-N, J-U-L. To make it a little longer, right? A U G P or S E P T October November December. So, um, actually, the J A for January is somewhat less common, but it is used. Sometimes when people really want to use only two letters, they want to save space. June and July are hard. When we have to, we make it JN and JL. But this is very, very not common. All right. I couldn't even tell you how to write August and September uh, with two letters. I don't even know. It's very unusual. But JA is not very unusual. Okay. So we got our months, we got our, our different ways of telling the dates. I'm going to play the recording. These are in sentences. Try to pull out the date that you hear. Page 31, exercise 5. Listen, you will hear dates in sentences. Write the dates in numbers. Write the month, date, year. A. Company operations began on August 1st, 1969. B. The first overseas company was established on October 2nd, 1982. C. On June 10th, 1986, the stock market decreased by 30%. D. The company introduced the new model on September 3, 1998. E. The project deadline is January 4, 2001. Page 31. Okay. So one of the things you will have heard, um, something we talked about only briefly is Ordinal numbers, ordinal, ordinal numbers. That means order, or which comes first, which comes second numbers. And those would be things like first, second, third, etc., etc., etc. Um, Koreans often mess this up. There's even a uh, 
online shopping, which is wrong. What do they call it? Uh, one one st should be eleven, but they but uh, uh, uh something like that. Anyway, um, this is the kind of thing that was probably taught to you in high school or middle school. It's the kind of thing I'm not going to spend much time on because you should study it in your book, not from your professor. That's the numbers you're going to hear. That's the numbers you did hear. Let's check it again. Five. Your dates in sentences. Write the dates in numbers. Write the month, date, year. A. Company operations began on August 1st, 1969. Right. B. The first overseas company was established on October 2nd, 1982. Sometimes we put a comma, sometimes we don't. C. On June 10th, 1986, the stock market decreased by 30%. D. The company introduced the new model on September 3rd, 1998. E. The project deadline is January 4th, 2001. Okay. So that time she said January 4th, 2001. She didn't say 2001 which was the name of the movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. She said 2001. All right. Turn the page. On the next page, we start a new chapter. And as usual, whoops, I can't do this this way. No, don't say that. And as usual, the first thing we do is read the headline and then read the objective. So the headline is making telephone arrangements. As I mentioned to you uh, last week, we will definitely do this. I often do telephone uh, making arrangements as part of the test. So let's take a look at the objectives. Objective number one to arrange a business meeting. So now we've got the combination of making a schedule and doing phone work. Uh, the second one, to exchange information in telephone conversations, okay, using the phone. Number three, to respond to telephone messages. Um, this one could be in writing, it doesn't have to be. Please flip your page over to page 35, uh, page 34. On page 34, you will see these kind of, uh, let's see it's here, these kind of telephone message forms. Please be very familiar with these. Some years on my final test, I give students a blank piece of paper. And I say, this is your message pad. Take a message. Well, that means two things. It means, one, you kind of need to have an idea of what you're doing in a telephone message. But the other one is you need to know to ask the right questions. Because typically when somebody calls, they provide information you request. If you don't ask me for my phone number, I might not remember to give it to you. If you don't ask me what my company is, when I'm talking, I might just say, please ask Mr. Jones to call me. This is Bill Smith. Click. And you give the message to Mr. Jones to call Bill Smith. He's like, what's his phone number? Oh, I don't know. What time did he call? Oh, I didn't make a memo. Oh, uh, what company is he with? Oh, I don't know. You have to ask these questions. So please become very familiar with the message forms like you see on page 34. All right, so far so good. So, we are going to do page 32 tonight. It's my tonight. It's Sunday night. 
and then we will stop all right so I need to jump up in my phone listing in my recordings and this is the recording where you are going to match the questions with the answers on page 32 number one where it says read the questions and match first you're going to quietly by yourself take a look at a b c d and look at the answers one two three four and make a guess which goes with which go ahead Got it? Let's listen. Unit 6, Making Telephone Arrangements. Page 32, Business Talk, Getting Started. Exercise 1. Listen and check your answers. May I have your name, please? This is Bob Parker from Global Systems. Could I speak to Mr. Adamo? Yes, of course. I'll put you through. Do you know the extension? Yes, it's extension 2247. It's busy. Can you hold, please? Yes, I can wait. Thank you. Did you get it? Whoops. May I have your name, please? Number two. This is Bob Parker from Global Systems. B. Could I speak to Mr. Adamo? Of course. I'll put you through. I'll put you through means I'll make the connection. Right now you're talking to me. I'm kind of a blocker. Now I'll put you through me the person you want. Number C, uh, do you know the extension? The extension. Sometimes when you call a company, every phone has its own direct telephone number. And nowadays I think maybe that's almost always. But in the old days, many times you couldn't call a phone directly. You had to call to somebody in front who would then say, oh, you're at telephone number 3, or number 13, or number 87, or number 267. We call that extension, because it, it is to extend, to stretch out from the central line. And even now, in many companies, when workers get a phone number, they only get a general number to, you know, on their name card, there's only a general number, because people can move and, and offices can change. So they only give the general number like 385-7000. And you call and you say, can I speak to Mr. Dickey? And they go, yeah, okay. And then they connect you 385-7326. So he's an extension 326. But maybe you cannot dial 385-7326. Maybe you can't dial directly. You must go through that we say switchboard operator. So what extension means from the main line, a secondary number. And maybe you can call it directly, and maybe you can't. All right. So do you know the extension? Yes, it's extension 2247 or 2247. D, it's busy. I tried to connect you, but his phone is busy. Can you hold, please? Can you hold on to the phone? Don't drop the phone. Don't put it down. Hold on to the phone until it's time. Can you hold the phone? And he says, yes, I can wait. Thank you. All right. Part two. Listen 
put the conversation in the right order. Well, actually, you could kind of take a look at it really quick. So I'm going to give you two minutes to look at it and try to make a guess. You can see that number one is already marked. And I want you to look at the photo because you might be surprised. See the guy wearing the headset? Nowadays, we usually think that guy wearing the headset is maybe some kind of telemarketing. You know, he's the guy who's calling lots of people. And actually, uh, now in the 21st century, the second decade of the 21st century, in the year 2020, very often we'd see somebody wearing a wireless, right? A Bluetooth earpiece. Right now I'm wearing not a Bluetooth because it's plugged into my computer. And my computer, well, it has, it has Bluetooth, uh, but I don't use it. So, uh, the idea of a guy wearing a headset might seem strange nowadays, but it was very normal then. I'm going to tell you that that man is actually a switchboard operator, which even in the 1990s, most people thought that was a woman's job. Most people thought that was a woman's job, just like a nurse is a woman's job. Um, but it has been, things have been changing. More and more men are taking women's jobs and more and more women are taking what used to be called men's jobs. So, yeah, good morning, TVT group. That would be the man. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I give you two minutes. Go. Cool. Okay, is that enough time? Let's just play the recording. Unit 6, Making Telephone Arrangements. Page 32, Business Talk, Getting Started. Whoops, Exercise. sorry, not the right recording. Try this one. Page 32, Exercise 2. Listen. Put the conversation in the right order. Good morning, TVT Group. Hello. Could I speak to Mr. Alomar at extension 19, please? May I have your name, please? This is Joan Foster from Western Energy. One moment, Ms. Foster. I'll put you through. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's busy right now. Can you hold, please? Yes, of course. That's all there is. Good morning, TVT Group. Hello. Could I speak to Mr. Alomar? At extension 19, please. Now he asked a name. Why did he do that? May I have your name, please? Why does he ask that question? Well, in many companies, they keep a phone log. That's why they have a central operator. 
because they want to know that people are working and not goofing off. You know. Can I talk to my mommy? Sure. What's your name? My name is Kimmy Jones. Okay, Kimmy. And who do you want to talk to? My mommy. What's your mommy's name? Mm, Jones. Well, we have many Jones. Well, it could be a problem. Hopefully, people know. Hopefully, the children are taught what their mommy's name is. Or she's at extension three one three. Okay. So sometimes they keep a record. The second part of it is that if the connection is broken, something happens and we're broken our connection, then the uh, operator could really quickly make a little note. So, may I have your name, please? This is Joan Foster, and then she continues from Western Energy. So why does she say that? Well, because, again, there's a, there's a log being taken, but also because it's not Joan Foster, his girlfriend, right? She might be his girlfriend. But the idea is that business is business. And so I'm not just me. I am a representative of my company. So I am Joan Foster from Western Energy. I'm Robert Dickey from Cayman University. One moment, Miss Foster. I'll put you through. I'll connect you. I'll put you through. One moment. Moment. Minute. A few seconds. Thank you. We say thank you a lot in English. Or, yes, of course. I don't remember which she said. It doesn't matter. It's pretty much the same thing. Of course. Sure, sure. I'm sorry it's busy right now. Could you hold, please? Yes, of course. But she could also say thank you. Can you hold, please? Thank you. Yes, I'll hold. Thank you for helping me. Okay, in English we say thank you a lot. So that's the end of tonight. Um... You have an assignment that I hope you have done. And uh, I'm going to stop here. See you in the second class this week. Be sure you watch the videos before the classes. Thank you.